Well, happy Tuesday, everybody. Thank you for joining me for today's online video devotion. That's part of our New Testament reading plan. You remember, we as a church family are reading the New Testament this year, 2020, five chapters a week, writing in our journals what God says to us and engaging with Him so we can grow spiritually. And I hope you're doing that. And if you're just now tuning in, start it. This is all new for you. Don't worry about catching up. Just start with where we are today and go to our church website. On the home page, you will see the... Uh, the uh, reading plan there, and you can download it. But today, we are in Acts chapter 23. And uh, you'll remember that the Apostle Paul has been arrested. And and, in a sense, I guess the Romans rescued him from a Jewish mob that was wanting to kill him. Uh, But he's he's still under arrest, and and, and he's in jail, so to speak. And um, in chapter 23, rather, he's already appeared... Uh, you know, the Romans have allowed him to, to appear before the Jewish council who is accusing him, and and that uh, nothing was resolved the first day they did that. And so they're going to do it again a second day. But what I want us to do is I want us to read verses 12 to 15. Then I want to make some comments, okay? Verses 12 to 15 of, of Acts chapter 23. And when it was day, the Jews formed a conspiracy and bound themselves under an oath, it was a religious vow, saying that they would neither eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. And there were more than 40 who formed this plot. Then in verse 14, they came to the chief priest and the elders and said, we have bound ourselves under a solemn oath to taste nothing until we have killed Paul. Now, therefore, you here, here's how we want you to help us carry, carry this out. You and the council notify the commander, the Roman commander, to bring Paul, to bring him down to you as as though you were going to determine his case by a more thorough investigation. So bring him down to the council chambers so you all can interrogate him again, you know, put him on trial and so on. And, um, And we, the 40 of us who've made this religious vow to kill him, we, for our part, are ready to slay him before he comes near this place. Hmm. Now, the plot to assassinate Paul was throttled because somebody learned about it and told Paul, and then the Romans learned about it as well, and so they didn't do this. But what's interesting to me is here's, here's some Jewish men who make a religious vow that they will not eat or drink anything until they have assassinated the Apostle Paul. They then go to the chief priests and elders, the leaders of of, of the Jewish faith in Jerusalem and plot with them and the Sanhedrin, the Jewish council, to, to help them carry out their plan. And, and so the council was going to say to the Romans, bring them back down here to our chambers, knowing that before Paul ever got there, these 40 men who made this religious vow were going to attack and kill Paul on the way. Just interesting <clears throat> about, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, religious people, if you will, forming a conspiracy to assassinate someone over religious dispute. Now, that's not new. That's happened time and time again throughout history. And by the way, it's not just a Muslim problem. If you know Christian history, you know Christians have done that just as much as Muslims have. So just know that. Um, but it's, but it, But it's still tragic and still horrible to think about uh, <clears throat> that religious people would become so so blinded um, by, by this stuff that they would want to kill somebody. Well, maybe we don't, we don't become so blind that we want to kill somebody, but brothers and sisters, sometimes don't we become so blinded by some of this stuff that, that uh, we do other bad things? I mean, think about uh, in, in our own American history, the 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 way the, the misuse of the Bible, the misuse of the Bible, the misuse of Christianity to support slavery in America, to support segregation in America, and how uh, religion and government work together to support that institution, how religion and government, religious people and government work together to uh, develop and support and carry out segregation for decade after decade after decade. See, there's, there's always a concern that we need to have when we, when we marry religion and government, when we marry Jesus 
to government. We need to be very, very careful because each one can then use the other to accomplish their purposes, and that never honors God. And Southern Baptist life, and our current SBC president, J.D. Greer, has announced that he's going to retire the the uh, broadest gavel. Now, for most of you, that doesn't mean anything. When we have our annual session where messengers from our churches come together each June, thousands of us, there's a gavel. Because it's a business meeting. There's a gavel that opens and closes sessions. And this broadest gavel is a historic gavel that's been in continuous use uh, since the, the late 1800s. John Broadus was, uh, in, the, in the 1800s, uh, one of the most gifted Baptist preachers we have ever had. He was one of the four professors who founded the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Greenville then, but uh, and after the Civil War, moved to Louisville, Kentucky, where it's at today, one of the most prestigious seminaries in the world. He was one of the four men who founded that seminary. Uh, following the Civil War, uh, Broadus was, was a nationally known preacher and scholar. Uh, his book on preaching was used way up until the, uh, the, the mid-1900s in seminaries all, over the, all, all around this country. He, gave, he was invited as a Southern Baptist to lecture at Yale. Harvard gave him an honorary doctorate. This is in years after the Civil War. So you're talking about a significant, talented man. But before the Civil War, John brought his own slaves. During the Civil War, John Broadus was a chaplain for the Confederate Army of Robert E. Lee. Great men who did great sin. And he often spoke in support of the Confederacy. Now, he, near the end of his life, he acknowledged that he, he was wrong. Grateful for that, but it was still too late. Um, I just want to use this story of these men making this religious vow and going to the Jewish Sanhedrin to conspire to assassinate Paul and to remind us of our history that that in our very divided culture, in our um, in, in 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 our culture where where secularism is on the rise and. Sin is on the increase, and 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 moral morality in many ways is diminishing, and and uh, the the influence of, of faith and Christianity is diminishing as well. That that we be very very careful to not get in bed with the government to rescue the kingdom of God, because the government can never grow the kingdom of God. In fact. In the early church, which grew faster than any time, you know, any time in history, the early church, great. <laughs> they, they, they were being persecuted by the government. History tells us that when we get in bed with the government, more often than not, um, the kingdom of God is diminished because we compromise our convictions. And so it's just a word of caution that as this world is changing and we're scared to death, that, that we learn to depend on Jesus Christ. We learn to depend on the Holy Spirit, on the Word of God, on the power of God to grow His kingdom. Because Do you remember what Jesus said when He was on trial before Pilate? He said, my kingdom is none of this world. If my kingdom had been of this world, my followers would have fought. My kingdom's none of this world. Sometimes as Christians, I think we forget that. And when we get in bed with government, if we're not careful, we get ourselves sinfully dirty. Let's trust God more than we trust any elected official or any government. Let's make certain we don't, in the eyes of the lost people in this world, and in particular the eyes of the younger lost people in this culture here in America, that we don't, we don't destroy our witness for Jesus Christ because they see us as being partisan rather than being disciples of Jesus Christ. Something to think about. Think about hard and honestly. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.